right. All right. This podcast is sponsored by Athletic, athletic Greens. Greens. <laughs> I would actually love an athletic green um, sponsorship. We don't, I don't have a connection there, so we could actually potentially you do, do that. They just, right. wouldn't, they just wouldn't pay us, but we could potentially. What's yeah. the point? Will they give us free athletic anyway, greens? Anyway, we're getting off topic. Okay. Again. We're All getting right. off topic. I was going to rehash one of my seminal, like one of these seminal, I think, ideas uh, of the thousand doors kind yeah. of thing, right? Just because if we're talking about failure, I also want to think about success. A bit and the irony well before i go into it let's just do the classic start with what's real and what's real is i think it'd be very interesting to think about the situation you and i are in right now Mm. and if that makes sense to you but from your perspective give a brief overview around how we met and if you ever expected us when we met to be doing something like this together. That was part of my 15 year plan. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what you're on about. My whole theory is just being debunked. <laughs> right. I'll just go back to drinking my S Pellegrino. <laughs> All right. I met, I met Joe at school. Mm, 2007. 2007. 15 years ago, I think. Yeah. Wow. Right. That's incredible. Mm. 15 years ago, we were, we were friends at school for sure. Mm. But if you were to tell me at school, that would be sort of doing a podcast together i think it would be a bit left field <laughs> yeah i'd say so too we've certainly how got did it. it happen how did we end up doing this together what's your view on how this happened objectively or your view no need to i'm not playing a game with you just how do you think we ended up well, literally literally how did we end up doing this together well we i guess we ended up doing it goes back to that car car ride we had on the way to where was it was Shoal, going up no, Shoal Bay, Bay yeah, yeah, going to Shoal Bay. We're in, we're in a car together. It's just us two talking, pretty much having a, a call it a self awareness chat or mm. something, talking about these kind of things, yeah, but deep, not fleshed out. Not small talk. Yeah, not small Opposite talk. Of small like, talk. And I'm sort of thinking, oh shit, like these things rattle around in other people's heads, mm. you know? And then that was the first, that was a long, that was quite a while ago. It was like a three hour drive. Yeah, it was 2020. Okay, not two that long year, Two and a half years ago. Jeez, it feels like longer. Yeah, it was just before lockdown. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, we, we started talking and, I, you know, you started Constant Student. I invited you. You invited me to Constant Student. I yeah. I thought it was a great idea. I enjoyed yeah. being, a, being a part of the community. And then, I don't know, we continued to have these sorts of conversations. Mm. And you said, uh, do you want to join me on the podcast? Mm. And I said, yeah, sounds good. Yeah. And that's kind of what happened what has been the impact of you doing this for yourself for me well yeah it's hard i think we've talked about this before but it's hard to realize because it's such a gradual change mm-hmm. it's mm-hmm. like tiny little world. like first time i did the podcast it was you and i mm. i was nervous to do it yeah well, and i'm I like that. Yeah. yeah i was like a bit nervous and you know we start press record and it's like oh and I was like, I know this is just us two and, you know. And we've chatted thousands of times. We've chatted thousands of times, but it's something about pressing record where you're just mm. like, oh. Yeah. And that was Astro kicking in, yeah, obviously. Yeah, yeah. But, I mean, that gets conditioned out of you real yeah, quick yeah, yeah. when you do it so many times. Mm. But, you, you know how we always have our WhatsApp chats and stuff like that. Yeah. And we talk about these things. I could, it was very hard for me, <coughs> excuse me, to get my head around these kind of concepts. Mm. But the more we've done it, like the more I've been able to think a little bit more deeply. Yeah. It's changed. I notice in even, I don't know if I can't correlate to reading this or maybe a combination of everything. I think it does. But it's like writing. Like I I can write a lot clearer. Yeah. All these sorts of things. Yeah. I can't remember what your original question was. No, no, you've answered it better than I could have ever hoped. What you're talking about is an improvement in your thinking. Yeah. This is something I've realized recently. Well, thinking is like a muscle. Yep. And you have to exercise it. And so it hurts when you talk about like complex things for a bit. And I don't like, let's say think, I don't like abstract bullshit, right? I don't like things that have no like, who cares? You know what I mean? Like, let's talk about what something is for its own sake. Mm. I like talking about like the, rea- the reality we're in and conversations with people like you help me dig deeper into the reality we're in. But it kind of hurts when you start. Yeah. And it's hard to digest. You're now going back to the anti-fragile, like the book Taleb. You're in here <laughs> right now. We've done episodes on it. If yeah. someone's near the podcast, 
and you're coming back to it with a deeper ability to like actually unpack it it's a very complex bloody book and so i think the episodes we did on that did pretty well <laughs> <laughs> fuck we all need a bit of help with taleb <laughs> it was complex and i remember, uh, that was when i was starting and i was like yeah you're like yeah. luke what do you think about that and i'm like ah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> now the, the the irony of all this i talk about thousand doors is that a at no point did you coming on the podcast was there this very conscious goal of i want to improve this thing i didn't know could be improved and same for me i just saw you i just noticed that you when we talk i talk to a lot of people about deep things but you're very curious and open mind compared to everyone and i thought luke's a pretty good i think luke is a very good kind of interviewer All right and we've talked about this and you know my mate byron and shout out to byron if he's listening very good podcaster and i told you what he said he's i was a bit worried when you had someone else <laughs> coming on with you like i enjoyed the short sharp eps and he goes but he was good he goes if it was me i'd be talking too much you know <laughs> trying to wrestle it but that's a good yeah. balance right so that's what i saw and it was just very random like why not do it yep you know the irony is that so much of that was unintended it was not linear that journey I could have we went we went to high school together that was it yeah right we weren't as close at high school as we are now but we were always pretty good mates a constant student i didn't invite you to constant student knowing that this would happen but that was a step towards this happening and the car trip right and then the reason for the car trip was other factors that we're friends with martino shout out he listens sometimes <laughs> actually he listens a lot so love you martino you know he you know organized that trip to show bay yeah and there's there's infinite factors that were actually not part of our control but have contributed to the success of this so when i said the success of this i don't know if this video video will have 20 views but to me this is a very successful experience it's very high quality very rewarding independent of some of the commercial outcomes people normally talk about with success mm that's been the case for you you and i both mm. now the, the, the idea of the thousand doors is just that at any point in time you're in one room right and the room is a good metaphor or or description of your current state of awareness all right this is just all the information you're actually aware of right now you can't be you can't be accused of knowing what you have no awareness what you can't see right you can only be accused of not being willing to see and you're always faced with every decision is like a door right and you always got a couple of doors and you might not even know which decision to make but the reality is if you open one door there's always another room there with additional awareness additional experience so you might consider it like changing roles at work or something you're going to get new experience mm -hmm. right you're not going to continue to get the same thing that you're you were getting and in that next room there's more doors right and so if you keep playing this game after every door even if you choose wrong or whatever you do there's always going to be another room with more doors and so is that the idea of the thousand doors is that imagine like there's a thousand of these sequentially and you don't know where they're going to lead but you know it will lead somewhere somewhere if you keep opening doors and you gain experience no matter what so even if something's wrong, it doesn't really matter because A, you couldn't have known. You only had the information you had available to you at the time. And B, you can use that experience from previous decisions or doors or challenges or whatever. You can use that to inform your decisions in the future. That's learning. The hardest way to learn is staying in the room you're in right now, not if you're not satisfied with it, on whatever level you want to think of it like living in sydney is a decision working this job is a decision doing a podcast is a decision if you're not satisfied or enjoying it and you never open any doors nothing will change and you guarantee that you won't learn and the opportunity cost is not that you miss one thing is that you miss this whole journey that actually erupts from this little moment to moment things it's a phenomenal understanding because the more and more i look at things the real things not just tend to happen without being planned the real big things can't happen any other way mm. so i use the metaphor often and i've done this is a episodes four and five of the podcast but of christopher columbus who uh you know 
and someone got angry at me for using this as an example because of like the whole you know colonialism and the work killing of, these people workosaurus rexes yeah. workosaurus rex yeah. but it's just like a very I'm not saying he was an amazing person i don't even know much about him but i think the concept is what yeah, you're getting at the concept right it's conceptual is that he you know he was he left up spain not portugal spain yeah going west trying to get to asia to go around the conflict in europe or whatever discovers america by accident like accident because how can you discover something that's unknown in an intentional linear way like i know exactly what america is and i'm gonna go that way to discover it you can't now you might head off thinking i think there's land there i don't know how big it is but if you're going to discover something new something wonderful you can't know in advance what it is <laughs> so that story you just described there's no linear way it could happen in 2007 people didn't think about podcasts it was like saying i want to be on radio with luke it wouldn't have even made sense <laughs> yet this was you know there's an infinite possibilities of how life could have gone this is one of them and you know you can't get caught thinking things could be better because if you're just satisfied with the reality you're in that doesn't matter if you are satisfied with the, your life situation the way things are gone but the irony is like i have brought up many examples through the podcast you can look at famous people i mean i don't want to labor the idea to death but the takeaway for me is that you can't the real great things like the kind of columbus thing must be unknown they must live in uncertainty it's like a surprise birthday party it's not good if you already know about it mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> well it comes down, it's it's a fascinating thing to think about because if i observe my if i observe the way i've thought in, in the past is you, you always you always want to envision a b c yeah this is where i'm going you want to know the room ahead you want to know you, but you want to know what's going to happen how it's going to be what you're going to get paid yeah it, well, yeah what you're going to you get paid what... all right when am i getting to x dollars yeah, when am yeah, i getting yeah how am i this yeah. is what i think yeah this is what i'll enjoy yeah it's like yeah you don't know until you go through the door yeah you don't know and it's for me it's that's where the doorman thing part of it comes from that idea of the thousand doors because mm. to me that's like a a guiding principle behind all this it all for me makes everything actually make sense because it kind of covers for me everything everything and why it's important yeah for this myth of failure concept specifically is that if i talk about all the things you talked about constant student the, the podcast our our friendship and relationship over time and a whole bunch of other people especially a lot of the people in the constant student community too and and by the way a shout out to puya who reached out after listening I, forgot, hey. I should mention i love if if you reach out to us or me especially by applying to to constant student because that just gives me a bit of more information about who you are but any any way please feel free to actually reach out yeah kind of love the stories of the people and the people we meet who are also interested in this stuff and, and and again that to me i don't know who exactly might might take that up that offer i've just put out there mm. right i can't tell you exactly what shape they are who they are what they look like but i can assume they'll be like a very particular type of lovely person good person to have in the community and things like that but i can't be precise about it so we're not stumbling around in the dark it's not this complete gambling with life the word is like intentional it's a measured shot We'll talk about investing a lot because I can get very kind of ooh, spiritual about it. investing because it's kind of like an investment. It's like, I don't know exactly what will happen, but in this general area, this door is worth opening. Yep. And in doing that, you know that things will actually work out because you'll just keep pivoting if they're not good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. It's this, but we, we resist change because on the other side of change is uncertainty. Hmm. And you talked about it in the first episode. We have this huge bias towards familiarity. Astro the dog, previous episode, is all about familiarity. The dog is comfortable if it knows the surroundings, right? I know what's here. You know, I was just skiing this week. And I was like, well, f the, the front mountain is so busy and annoying. The good mountain is kind of further away. 
it's quieter for more experienced skiers. And I'm like, oh, I don't know how to get there. I know how long it takes. I don't know if the weather go back, but the experience I'm having is not good on this mountain. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yet I'm still resisting going here, and I don't shut up about Mythophalia and Thousand Doors and Astro the dog. Yeah. And I'm here in the situation myself resisting. Yeah. You know, awareness, always awareness, never perfect. But yeah, that's that's I think why that idea is important to bring back because the opportunity cost is so real and you just don't know what it's going to be mm. but you have to learn to live with a bit of uncertainty not like i'm gonna quit <laughs> uncertainty not like i'm just gonna quit my job and, and see what happens yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> not that level of uncertainty like, no you know, i i kind of don't get around those people too much the ones that like need the the rush of like i'm, I'm gonna create this incredible like gear experience for myself but then it all it, it always know, comes it's, back it's, to... it's too far in the other direction for yeah. me but mm. yeah that's the fascinating thing mm. that's the fascinating is the openness and i describe it as openness just letting things find you because when you surrender a bit of that control you'll notice that the fear goes away and it makes failing a lot harder if you realize that thousand doors so yeah that's that idea and we'll continue on the next with the next bit of this series. Sounds so good. Thank you, Luke. Thank you, Joe.